What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Standard channel. My name is Shanks and today we are on the map Firian deal for a 1v1 video commentary in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 in a match that happened in the BFME 1 online arena which you can also join by clicking on the patch 2.22 launcher in the description down below. Alright, we have the Mordor player Isildur versus the Isengard player Noldor. Okay, Noldor versus Isildur. That's a pretty interesting match over there. All right, Isengard didn't capture the settlement in the front. He's gonna send the Uruk straight forward to destroy the Lambert Mill, and that means Mordor will grab this one. But that's a very, very strategy. You need to do this. He was capturing this one, but this one is gonna be under pressure by the Orc warriors. This mill is unsavable and will be taken down. So knowing this, he's gonna send the Orc warrior to this location. Because otherwise you can't keep up with the speed of the Urukai. Urukai are just much faster compared to the Orc Warriors. So you need to be waiting there before the fight breaks out. This one is going to be taken down. Three furnaces into the Uruk pit. And the Urukai will be joining the battlefield very very soon. Mordor can recapture this one if he wants to. But his money is not looking too hot. As we are talking, okay? And also not using the Eye of Sauron. He's going to use it now to destroy this Lumber Mill. Almost level 2, but the Eye of Sauron got nerfed, so you now get less experience, but he will get level 2 by killing some of the workers. And this level 2 Uruk or Orc can be super, super devastating, okay? So Orcs everywhere. Orc pit number 2 is building up. Mordor was able to save this Lumber Mill with like 20,000 you know, Lumber Mill workers repairing it. That's pretty good. He will kill some of the workers here with the Urukai, but that's already a phenomenal start into the game by the Mordor player. He was able to capture both the enemy settlements and keep also his buff. So he has now, as we are talking, a discount of his structures by 20%. It means he can build a slaughterhouse for only 280 instead of 350. And this 70 you can save at the beginning of the game, this early, is so good, you know? Like, so good. 70 in the late game is not very important, but in the early game, it's a lot. So Isengard is going to use Warchant, but he needs to reclaim his settlement very, very early. That's what you need to do. It's a difficult matchup for Isengard at the beginning because of the Orc spam, and you need to get your Uruk Pit to level 2 ASAP because in this matchup, you need Berserkers. That's very important. Berserkers, 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 okay? So building up a Furnace in the front. Why? Because it's tankier compared to a Slaughterhouse by 500 HP. It's actually a lot at the beginning. And he's gonna fill up the base with the slaughterhouses because they are giving you the food bonus, making your trolls cost less resources. Also, this one is gonna be taken down. He has so many workers repairing it. And they are able to delay so much time. Oh my god. How many workers does he have to repair this? Oh my god. I've never seen something like this in my life. It was healing more than it was getting damaged. Holy! Okay, now we get some Berserkers up on the field. You see, this micro is so important because most people will just let it dis get destroyed. But you can always delay at least. If Maybe sometimes you can't deny from getting destroyed, but often you can delay the destruction and every kind of advantage, even if it's a very small one, can be you know, helpful to change the outcome of the game, the direction of the game into your favor. Furnace you is level 2, it's gonna help Isengard to get a bit more money, because you need lots of money to spam Berserkers now. That's a very important situation, Mordor in the meantime creeping the here, and Mordor is doing a phenomenal job in this game. I'm being honest with you, like playing a flawless game, the strategy is like expert level over there, playing it patient, playing it smart, build order is great, um, I would throw in maybe one more Orc pit, but I think the map is not too big for this. So I think two Orc Pits should be maybe enough. But with three Orc Pits, you can keep pressuring like he does. And you can creep both the sides simultaneously. You can creep this, this, and also this at the same time with three Orc Pits. While keeping the pressure up on your opponent. And that's what Mordor needs to do. You need to dominate the early game. Because in the mid game, Isengard will be stronger. With upgrades and eventually Lourdes, Saruman later on. And also Freezing Rain. So you need... To use the maximum potential of your orc warriors to dominate the entire map, okay? That's your potential goal. 
If Urukai, Hiro, up on the field, Lurz, ladies and gentlemen, he's here. So Isengard needs to capture this outpost, very important in this matchup. And we get more and more Orc Warriors too. Level 2 Orc Pit means you get faster production speed on your uh, Orc Warriors. They come on the field a bit faster, same to the Trolls. And Outposts will be eventually taken by the Orc Warriors too. So they can creep this, now probably more, uh, one of them is being even, even almost level 4. Here what you can do is you can use Bloodthirsty to get the missing amount of experience by killing your own Orc Warriors. Each level makes you significantly stronger. We are not talking about 1 or 2 percent, it's like 5 to 10 percent each level you take. So a level 10 unit for example can easily 1v5. A level 10 Orc Warrior can f kill 5 level 1 Orc Warriors. That's how important the level advantage in this game is. If even throws up on the field, he's getting bitten by the Vork. The Vork is gonna get punched in the face. Don't touch my tralala. -la. <laughs> Look at him. Okay, one more shot. Nice, that's a huge kill for Lourdes. Oh my god, he's dancing. Dance, dance, dance. Okay, level almost 4 for Lourdes. That's good, because you want to get him to level 5 as soon as you potentially can. That's a very important power spike for the Uruk hero Lourdes. To unlock his damage leadership. Armory upon the field, industry has been used before. Mordor is also industry, has 6.4k and he has such a great eco that he will eventually just straight up rush the Witch King, you know. The Witch King, of course, a very important hero because here is the thing. When you rush Nazgul against Isengard, it will be helpful for a certain amount of time. But Nazguls are falling out in the late game and you still need Witch King. However, if you rush Witch King, you don't have to get another Nazgul upon the field because your Witch King has all what you need in one hero. He has Nazgul power, he has leadership. And then you just need, go, need to go for Troll Cage and combos. That's all you need to do. Nazgul, you will have to still go for the Witch King afterwards. You are delaying yourself by 5,000 resources, you know? That's the thing. Level 4 Lourdes. It's gonna use Carnage. Let it be Carnage. Even workers are going to war. It's kind of very smart. You see the small tactics, capturing it, cancelling it. So Isengard can't immediately reclaim this. and has to wait for the circle to be filled. And this is what I'm talking about. Like this 5 seconds advantage there, 10 second advantage there, preparing your structure to buy another 5 seconds here and there. This is so important because you have like few of them, all of a sudden you have like a whole minute advantage over your opponent. You know? I think he has all the upgrades now. Yes, he does. Beside the Forge Blades, which is good because you don't need Forge Blades in this matchup. But what you need as Aizen is the Palantir. The Palantir for the immunity of fear. That's very important. Because you have no Saruman. So either you need Saruman or you need Palantir. If you don't want to be scared by this Nazgul. And he's coming. And he has not even heavy armor yet. The purple animation you see is because of the Dread Visage, which reduces the armor of the enemy units by 10%. I can use Screech. And maybe with the Palantir you could have killed him here. But I think the Witch King is gonna be just safe. They are running into different directions. The Screech is coming in clutch. Uh, luckily he will save all of them and they can respawn over time. Lords also use the Cripple and Witch King will be forced to disengage. This outpost has an Archer inside. That means the Archers should be able to protect this. There we go. And this level 2 mil is also extremely important for Aizen. So now he has 3.3k. It looks like he wanna save up for the for the for the Saruman. To, do, to counter the ultimate hero from Mordor. He's trying to get the ultimate hero from Isengard. Outpost control from Mordor. Mordor has troll cage and almost level 2. Yes, um other than that, he's gonna have lots of money, I believe. Ah, he has not that much money. No, why he has not that much money? I can't really tell. He feels a bit broke. I'm not sure though why, because he has the Witch King and he has like, okay, never mind. I mean, he has Troll Kitch level 2, Drama Troll. But I was expecting him still to, a bit, to have a bit more money, you know? Berserkers all, ar all around the map. Never stop caring about map control. The map you control can't be controlled by enemy. So you get more money and your opponent gets less. So it's like a double win win situation, you know? Six power points for Mordor and four power points for Isengard. Looking to the power points as we are talking, it looks like Isildur, the Mordor player, will be able to unlock his darkness a bit sooner compared to the Isengard player Noldor, okay? 
And dude, I'm so happy, by the way, guys. Okay, I need to say, I need to tell you that I'm so happy. Listen to me. I can't be, I can't complain. You hear me in 2024? It's so active nowadays. So many people are in the launcher. So many people are playing in the matchmaking. We are happy and grateful. Thank you, guys. All of that is for you, you know, so you can still play the best RTA schemes ever online. And very soon we will also add the, the co-op search, so you can also team up for, with your ally, with your own ally for a 2v2 match. And then in later on, there will also be Bifimi 2 and Rise of the Witch King in the online arena. Right now it's only for Bifimi 1, but sooner or later, and we are not talking about ages or years, Hopefully in a couple of months, you will also be able to use the BFME launcher to play BFME 2 in Rise of the Witch King. Okay, Lourdes level 5. Huge army, double leadership, plus war chant. Which is on cooldown. I believe here in this situation, Isengard needs Tainted Land. Because Mordor will have to use it to make a play. And then you are ready to, to cover the land to defend yourself, you know? Industry has been used by Isengard player Noldor on the level 3 furnace. He's gonna get so much money handled. You get out of that. That's pretty juicy. And Speechcraft has been used. And here is the thing. When they are level 3, they are already immune to fear. But even if they were not, Saruman's leadership here tells you invulnerability to nearby troops. So, no, don't you worry, child. I'm here for you. That's what Saruman is telling to his own creation. Outpost will be defended, no problem. You can also garrison the towers, by the way, in patch 2.22. So you can build a tower and put units inside. Beautiful fireball on the catapult. There was the only catapult Mordor had. Witch King has been chunked and Warchant is available, but most of the combos, or one of them, has not many archers in it. Trolls wanna go charge, but it's a dangerous charge you are taking, my friend. Because there is a Saruman who can turn it and warm tongue your army and steal all of them. That would be a disaster. That's why Saruman is so great against Mordor. Because trolls, in order to deal damage, they need to come to you. And here you can just wait with this. Oh, such a good move here. Now he's exposed though. If he gets knocked down, steal them. Okay, he stole only two of them. Now the guy needs to... Oh no, that's dangerous. Oh no, darkness, boom, boom, boom. And lords, boom, boom, boom. Lords, run, run, Lords! A disaster! No, no, no! Oh boy, Lords is killed the Lords, Witch King! He's gonna cripple before he dies. Cripple Ajax dealing a great chunk of damage to the Witch King, but it's not going to be enough. Put Lords next to the outpost, man. So re Arts inside will be dealing more damage. And now Mordor can keep going to the outpost, but remember, he has no more leadership available, okay? Leadership is very important, because without leadership, I wish he would put Lourdes here next to the outpost. Because the archers inside the outpost when Lourdes is there, where he is, will deal more damage. And you want to manually aim the trolls. Look at the damage. I'm telling you, 60% more damage they are dealing. Even the drummer troll is getting melted. One of them has been insta-melted. There is a level 5 troll, the Rogash, you know, the king of trolls. Because he's the one who killed the wizard. Look at him, boys. But we have to Hulk. It's the Hulk right there. Did he kill the Sar uh, No, he didn't kill the Lourdes, but Saruman has been killed. Such an unlucky play for Saruman. He didn't move fast enough. If he would have get Oh, what is he doing? Is he selling them? But oh, it was very close, actually. Oh my god, he almost sold them all. <laughs> also happened to me. It's not funny when it happens to yourself, but it's happy. It's funny when it happens to somebody else. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, that would be actually a disaster. Imagine you set all your army like this. What can men do against such reckless seed? Trying to use the momentum of the rain to go for a play. And with the rain, he should be able to out damage this army, no problemo. But Mordor is still the map, okay? That's what we need to be careful about. Mordor is the power point advantage, five power points. His siege works almost level two. The catapults are coming every 30 seconds. The Nazgul can't approach this army, nor can the Witch King. And the three combos with Lord's leadership and Warchant will melt everything. But in the meantime, orcs being literally everywhere. And that's the power of orcs. They don't need to be powerful as a unit. But they are spammy. Their quantity beats most units' quality. And they are so annoying to deal with. Because you need to deal with them. That's why you need 
walk riders in this matchup is Isengard. You need something that can kill them fast. You want to trample them. Otherwise, you need to shoot at them, which you can kill with, you know, obviously, but it will take you more time to do this. You know what I mean? Isengard's lead game is still super scary. You can get like a huge um, army. With 500 command points, you can, like a, you can have like a huge army here, by the way. Like a huge army. Mordor has still the map. The, fully power, the full power of Mordor against the full power of Isengard. Who is going to be victorious, boys? It's the big question right there, okay? Fireball incoming. Beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. Six power points for Mordor and one power point for Isengard. The trolls are charging. Rain is on cooldown. There comes the Warm Tongue. He's going to miss everything. One of them is being on the hunt for Lourdes. And the other one is... Oh, what a fine hit. Now there comes the artillery. Witch King dealing bonus damage to Saruman, by the way. And it's not going to be the Witch King, but it's going to be a normal Nazgul that can finish off. But one of the Nazgul is going to be taken down, but it's absolutely fine. Trading your Nazgul for a wizard like Saruman, it's absolutely fine. As long as it's not the Witch King you are trading, you are good to go. Okay? Now the push is happening. The rain is still on cooldown, okay? The Witch King making a big mistake there, committing, but I think he's lucky enough to get away from this location. Lourdes was not nearby, but this Nazgul is going to make a huge mistake and run it down. And the army is not very powerful. That means the attack won't be able to... What is this Witch King doing? Okay, now it's mistakes happening. Now some fiesta is happening. Okay. Alright, maybe Isildur didn't want the game to end yet, you know? Maybe he was like, okay, this game is so fun, we gotta keep playing, man. And in order to not make you quit the game, here, you can kill my two Nazgûls and my Witch King and my all my level, high, highly level trolls. Besides, just leave me the level 6-1 because I need a leader for my trolls. Boom, 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 chakalaka. Boom, 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 chakalaka. <laughs> this is the power of Katas against combos. Like, most people are like, what can I do as Mordor against Isengard lead game? Dude. Did you just see what happened? Did you just see what I saw? Catapults, man. Just make catapults, bro. That's your answer to all your problems. Like, you know. This Isengard needs to make anti-siege weapon units, which are berserkers. Your fireball can kill them, but there are too many of them. You can only kill one of them with fireball, or they are clumped like this. Maybe you can kill two. But you need some sort of melee damage it can crush them in a second. Your, your combos can crush them too, but it's gonna take you time to crush them. No? Fireball will one-shot them. No problemo. Here comes the fireball. One shot, one opportunity to see if you ever want it. But Lourdes can also one-shot them. With Carnage it is. Or two-shot them without the Carnage. It's also good. So you need to protect your Katas, my friend. You need to protect your Katas. If you don't, Uruk Pit, so important structure, will be destroyed by the catapults too. Holy moly. Damage is crazy. The, the way the katas are working is they are dealing more damage to structures, but less damage to heroes like Lourdes or Ganna, for example. Or against horses, they did less damage. So a Vault Rider can tank the Kata a lot, while a combo or Crossbowman Rider can't. And Crossbowman main weakness is the lack of defense. So they are squishy, glass cannons if you want to tell them so. And for that reason, they will die to one shot. Unlike, unless you have War Chant plus this leadership from this guy, and you have 90% armor, then they won't get one shotted. Or if you are highly leveled. But other than that, if you have like only one sort of leadership, they will get one or two shot at maximum. Nazgus are back in the business. Witch King is about to join in very, very soon too. Um, almost there. The rain is available. And now Noldor has the chance to push him back. But again, you need to find a healthy and a good way to deal with this catapults. Because you can't be waiting for your fireball every 1 minute and 15 seconds. 
Reigns available will be used. Now the trolls are having no leadership, okay? No leadership means less damage, less tankiness, especially. There comes the warm tongue. And Saruman once again making the huge mistake to face tank this. There are too many targets you want to kill. Kill the Nazgûls first. The trolls are dying like flies, but that's the enemy land in which Isengard also have no leadership. And the combos are being knocked down on the ground, and there comes also the Witch King. Witch King is going to be sent on the Saruman. Saruman is going to get killed. Lourdes is going to get killed. And Mordor has almost the Balrog available, while Isengard only sitting on 13 power points. And Noldor will leave the game in the power of Mordor against the power of Mordor, as Saruman said. He saw it coming. He said it in the films. Against the power of Mordor, there can't be no victory. GG, well played. I hope you enjoyed this. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.